Today I'm going to turn this piece of cheap Chinese PCB blank copper into this beautiful circuit board with solder mask and I'm going to use this machine here which is my universal laser cutter. Let's get started. So I designed the circuit board using a program called KeyCAD which I think is incredibly good especially as it's free. Uh, so I made a lot of layers. Um, I just exported it as a PDF into CorelDRAW. So over here you can see all the layers. We've got um, we've got cut holes which is anything that's cut on the circuit board. Overlay which is the designators. Solder mask which is the which is that green stuff which we're going to burn off. Uh, we've got pad holes which is the, the, the white holes in the middle of the pads. Then we've got the pads, tracks, and then we've got a backing which is just a black rectangle. So what I'll do is I'll selectively choose which layers I'm going to print and the first two layers I'm going to print will be cut holes and overlay. So I'll do that in the next step. So let's look at the PCB I'm using. I've chosen phenolic because it cuts easily with the laser cutter. You could use fiberglass but you have to get very hot when you're cutting it with the laser and it kind of makes the job difficult. This is easy. So the first step I do is I clean the PCB. I've got these uh, kind of rubbery block things you buy from Radio Spares. You could probably find them on Digi DigiCare to guess. Uh, it makes cleaning really good. You can see I've cleaned half the board. It's just, it's just like using a pencil eraser. If you don't have that you could probably get away with just a bit of um, your Scotch-Brite and then finish it off with a bit of isopropyl alcohol just, just to get any oils off. So this blank bit of PCB is beautiful and clean. It's time to do a rough cutout of the PCB. Accuracy is not important here, we're just getting it at roughly the size of what we want to use. CO2 won't really cut copper very well, so you can see it's it's kind of there but scored so you just you just snap it out at this point try not to rip the copper if you snap it the right direction it won't ruin kind of snap it downwards you won't tear the copper off and there we go now I like to preheat my board before I put it in my fancy spray booth let's give a shot of that fancy spray booth it's just a box sitting on a chair and then I get this paint here which is a two-in-one primer and top coat and I like to use white because it shows contrast really good so we'll just spray that really really thin coats I'll do it probably about three of those thin coats and I'll hit it with the uh, hot air gun it's a cool day and uh, and I'll rotate them at 90 degrees between each each uh, layer of paint. Okay, this next step is really simple. It just does all the cutting, which is, includes the holes and the border, and it also does the engraving. You probably can't see it too well, but there's a yellow layer there, which is engraving, and a red layer, which is cutting. And I'll show you the settings I'm using on a universal laser. That's a 60 watt. Anyway, let's get this party started. Well those are all done, ready to come out, and it's, oh, it's stuck down well. So while the laser, the CO2 laser, doesn't have enough energy to actually cut copper, it's the wrong wavelength, it does do enough to, to injure the copper so we can actually break these boards out. Also these mounting holes, which I'm going to use, 
here will actually just pop out. You can just push them, push them out. So that's all prepared. You can see there's still got a, it's still got a sacrificial water on it, and I've given it another clean with isopropyl. That sacrificial border is good because I don't have to worry about putting my finger oils on while I'm holding it. Also means the copper kind of gets rough on the edge of that as well. So I've got a clean copper edge there. So now we're going to paint some, put some paint on to resist the etchant for the etching process. I'm going to use my heat gun there to preheat the PCBs up. It just means the paint dries so much faster. And I'm using the two-in-one again. Primarily because it's a high contrast, uh, which will make the board look really good. So now the pins are cut, we can just put the PCB in a very accurate location every time. So we'll need to put that back in there for when we do the solder mask. Alright, it's time to reveal some copper. I'm going to run it probably two or three times. The first time takes the paint off, the second time cleans it, and the third time just give us, gives it an extra clean. So here we go. Don't do that. So I've still got it in the cutting mode, I need to switch that layer off, engraving. It's easy to make a little mistake at each step. Right, that's all ready for etching and if you look very closely here you can see that the laser cutting on the other side has actually made it through and it's just inside the engraving which looks like, looks like we've got pretty good alignment. So now I've got this nasty stuff here called ferric chloride, it stains like buggery. So we're going to drop that in there and we're going to run that for around 15 minutes or so, it's quite strong. And what I like to do is I have a little paintbrush and every so often I'll just come along and just paint over it to wipe any oxide layers off. Makes it itch a lot better and just give it a shake. So if you leave it sitting still, it won't itch evenly. So a bit of shaking and a bit of wiping. So I'll leave that to go for a while and, and we'll see uh, how long it takes that copper to come off. So we're about 12 minutes in and you can see the copper is mostly gone. It's a little bit there and there. So uh, we'll just keep, keep that going for another couple of minutes and that'll all be gone. Oh well, that's all done. Just got to get it out of here without getting covered in crap. Oh, there's a good sign. The fact that this piece here just fell off, that means that that copper is gone that was holding it together. Let's get this out. Anyway, that looks, that looks pretty good. So I'll go wash that in some water and... Uh... Now that the etching is complete, you can see that all the holes can be seen through because the copper that the laser didn't cut has now been etched away so the holes are actually quite clear 
which means they've got good alignment between the first side and the second side. Now a lot of people would go, oh let's take the paint off now so that we can do the soldering. That's the opposite thing I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that white paint because it gives me beautiful contrast and I'm going to paint over the top of it with some custom paint that I had made at the local paint shop. The label's gone, I, I don't know what it was, but it's um, from memory it's 20% uh, clear lacquer and no, 20% green, bright green circuit board colour and 80% clear lacquer, which gives me a nice translucency. So I'm going to spray this on top of here next and you'll see what happens. Here we have four completed circuit boards. I'm really pleased with them. I mean, I know I could send off to China and get them done pretty cheap, but there's something satisfying about building, you know, four circuit boards in about three hours' time. Here's one of the uh, circuit boards that's been assembled. It's a what it is is a remote control motor controller, and there's the powerful um, H bridge and a little LCD display. And then a remote, so you can, uh, you can control that little motor over there. But obviously, you can control the big motor as well. And these batteries look like should be 160 batteries in the real one. So uh, getting getting there with with the project. Thanks for watching.